For problem number 12, we're asked to find all these things, vertex, axis of symmetry, max, min, and range for the given function. And we should recognize that the given function is in standard form, standard form for a quadratic function, and where the coefficients of the quadratic, linear, and constant are given as a, b, and c. So in other words, if we, we want to figure out what the vertex is, we first need to realize that a is 3 and b is negative 4. The c value is negative 2, but we don't need that right now. Because the x-coordinate of the vertex, in fact, the axis of symmetry, uh, the, the equation for the axis of symmetry is x equals the opposite of b over 2a, or negative b over 2a. Well, in this case, b is negative 4, and a is 3, so we get negative, negative 4. The opposite of negative 4 is positive 4, and 2 times 3 is 6. Well, 4 sixth is the same as 2 thirds. So we, we, we don't always like when we get fractions for our x, because then we have to put that fraction back in, but we can do that in order to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, by the way, the axis of symmetry, x equals 2 thirds, is the equation for the axis of symmetry. But remember, that cuts, let's, let's do that right now, actually. That, that splits the vertex. So if there, there's 1, then 2 thirds is right there. And the, the line, x equals 2 thirds, x equals 2 thirds is the line, like I said, that, that, that intersects the vertex. So uh, all we have to do is find the y-coordinate, and we'll plot the y-coordinate of the vertex somewhere on that vertical line. But in order to do that, we have to plug in 2 thirds for x. So we have 3 times 2 thirds squared minus 4 times 2 thirds minus 2. Let's move it over here a little bit. 3 two thir times 2 thirds squared. So you have to square the 2 thirds first. So we have 4 ninths minus 4 times 2 thirds. That's 4 over 1 times 2 over 3. Same with this one over here, 3 over 1. Uh, 4 times 2 is 8 thirds minus 2. Oh, not too bad. 3 divides evenly into 9 three times. So we can write this first product as 4 thirds. 4 thirds minus 8 thirds. And then if we, we want to save ourselves a little bit of time here, we'll write 2 over 1 as if we multiply top and bottom by 3, because we have to get a common denominator if we're going to add or subtract fractions. So if we multiply top and bottom by 3, 2 can be rewritten as 6 thirds. So all we have to do is combine the numerators, 4 minus 8 minus 6 all over 3. 4 minus 8 is negative 4 minus 6 all over 3. And four, negative 4 minus 6 is negative 10, because negative 4 plus negative 6. So negative 4 minus 6 is the same as negative 4 plus negative 6. That's negative 10 over 3, which is negative 3 and 1 third. But <coughs> when we're drawing the <coughs> when we're drawing the parabola, plotting the vertex, that's the beauty of not having graph paper, is that you can just <laughs> Plot the two-thirds, you decide where two-thirds is going to be, and then you decide where negative ten-thirds is going to be. It's going to open up, so the vertex is at two-thirds, comma, negative ten-thirds. So you can just call that negative ten-thirds. You don't even need to really worry about where it is, just down there somewhere. But it is negative three and one-third, if you want to be precise. And then we're going to, the parabola is going to open up, and it's going to be a little bit more narrow than normal because of the 3, the a being 3. So we have our vertex, check. A axis of symmetry, check. Max and min. So there's no max on this one, no max, because the parabola keeps climbing. It goes up forever. There's no highest y value. But the min value, though, is the lowest y value, which is negative 10 thirds, which means that the range which 
represents the lowest y value to the highest y value. The range would be from negative 10 thirds all the way through infinity. There's no highest y value, but the lowest y value is negative 10 thirds. That's it.